how are you doing? Thank you for stopping by. This is Father Ban Inspirations. Are you here for the first time? You are in the right place. And if you're coming back, so nice to have you. Folks, please remember to subscribe to this channel if you've not done so. I want to share this exciting topic with you. Overcoming spiritual anxiety. You will love this. If you're being around the block of life, you will agree with me that separation could be a very hurtful experience. Hearts are broken when people part ways, maybe due to the death of a loved ones, or when relationships break down, or when people decide to move on for any reason at all. Those who serve prison terms will tell you that the worst part of their situation is the confinement which separates them from their families and friends. As I entails a voluntary or forced separation of one from one's usual place or residence to a foreign or strange place. Behind every exile, there is a captivity. The experience of the people of Judah in Babylon will give us some idea. My dear friends, there is usually a cause for an exile. In the case of the people of Judah, the second book of Chronicles, chapter 36, from verse 14 to 16, beginning again from verse 19 to 23, tells us that their successive kings and leaders offended God by performing or practicing various kinds of abominable actions, which included the pollution of the temple. Today, St. Paul will tell us in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 16 to 17, that our bodies represent this temple. As a result of the people's abominable actions and after repeated warnings, the anger of God came down upon them without remedy. That means the Babylonians laid siege on Jerusalem, destroying the temple, tearing down the walls, and taking the people away to captivity where they were for 70 years until God raised a king, a pagan king Cyrus, to set them free. Friends, from the narrative of the experience of the people of Judah, we understand that there are two forms of exile, the physical exile and the spiritual exile. But we have to note immediately that they are congenially connected. That means a physical exile could be the consequence of a spiritual exile. The first experience of exile in the scriptures was not the Babylonian captivity, no. It was actually the banishment of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. We all know this story. They disobeyed God by eating all the fruits in the middle of the garden following the suggestion of the devil represented by the serpent. Consequently, they were physically disconnected from the garden. But that physical disconnection was a consequence of their spiritual default, that is their disobedience. My dear friends, sin has a way of taking us to exile. Spiritual exile refers to the captivity of the soul by sin. So you go on spiritual exile when you disconnect from God and focus on your selfish desires and ambitions or when you fall into the trap of the devil whose plan is to steal, kill and destroy as we can see in John chapter 10 verse 10 a. My dear friends, the narrative of the prodigal son we can see in the gospel of Luke chapter 15 from verse 11 to 32 gives us a clearer picture of how people can go on a spiritual exile. We understand the narrative. The second son comes to the dad to request for his own part of his possessions. And when the dad gave him everything he wanted, he took all he had and travels to a distant country. The distant country here has very strong significance. It is a disconnection, it is a deportation, it is an estrangement. It is a disconnection from the real source of life to a connection to a place of destruction and dissipation. My dear friend, think about your life. You could be in exile. Are you where you are supposed to be in life? Being in exile means being in the wrong place for the wrong reasons. Any life lived without God is an exile project site. Maybe you are constantly getting things wrong in your work, in your relationship, and in your life generally. You may be in exile and you need help. 
The good news is that God cares about you. Even when everything and everyone fails you, as we can see in Psalm 27 verse 10. After 70 years, God made it possible for the people of Judah to be liberated through a pagan king to return and to rebuild their city. God might liberate you at this point in time. He will. And you go back to rebuild your life. This is the time for you to focus on God and do not lose hope. God is thinking about you. And I want to tell you that his thoughts are of peace, a hope and a future. You shall come out from your exile. In fact, your exile will turn into exaltation. Psalm 126 from verse 1 to 2 says, It will be like a dream when God delivers you and your mouth will be filled with joy. And this joy no one will take away from you. This is the will of God for you. His mercy and compassion is still with us. The same thing that made him send his only son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. On your own part, there will be the need for you to make a conscious effort to undo your past mistakes that made you to get into exile in the first place. What you do in exile determines if you will be released or if you will stay on. Let us take a clue from the prodigal son coming to our senses. That may be what you need at this point in time. As we continue this journey, let us focus on the word of God. Let us make that effort to return to God. God is calling us to help us to come out from our exilic experience. And I want to tell you that the new thing God is doing in our lives will be powerful and will also get, get us that peace that we need in our lives. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your word today. Help us with your grace to realize that we are in exile and not to be given excuses and to make this effort to come out, to lift up our hands to you so that your grace will help us to come out from that exile, to be liberated finally and to experience a time of renewal, rebuilding, restructuring, and regeneration. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.